Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to install React into our project and write our very first component. So let's get going on that right now. Okay, so we now have an, a Meteor project going. It's essentially blank, save for a body tag in the uh, HTML file. And I've actually opened up my Chrome. I have my console open just so we can see errors or anything pop up when they come up. Well, let's go ahead and head to our command line because what we need to do is first add support for NPM. Now, to get NPM support, we don't need to do anything to Meteor, really. However, we do wanna, let's say, open up a new tab. I'm going to change, make sure I'm in the correct directory for our actual site here. I'm using, so you want to change directories into your site, wherever it may be located. And from here, we can run a command npm init. Now, if you've ever done any node work before, npm init should be very familiar to you. What it's doing is essentially going to create a package file for you. So I hit npm init. It asks for a name. I'm going to say my resolutions because this is going to complain if we use a capital letter in here. And I can just breeze through these by hitting enter. We can always update this stuff later. So now if we breeze over to our sublime text, you'll see that it's created a package.json file. Now, like I mentioned in the previous video, this is something that's exclusive to Meteor 1.3 and higher. So make sure you're on 1.3. If you don't know how to get there, check out the previous video and make sure that you are on 1.3 before proceeding or else this uh, following exercise isn't going to work at all. So now that we have a package file, let's go ahead and add React. We can do that simply by saying npm install hyphen hyphen save space React. Now what this save command is going to do, this flag here is essentially going to save this dependency to our package.json file. So you'll notice this file change a little bit after we run this command. So let's go ahead and enter and it's going to go ahead and grab everything. Okay, as you can see, it's grabbed everything. If we head back to our code, you can see that our package file now includes a dependencies and has added React version at the time of this video, it's 14.7. Okay, so we've also been given a node modules folder that includes React and all of its dependencies. So we should be good to go there. So now that we have React set up, we have our packages.json, we're ready to go. Let's actually start creating our project. Now, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna change this resolutions.html. I'm gonna rename this to index.html for no reason other than I like that. And I always look for index.html to be sort of the root index file, okay? So we have index.html. Now let's go ahead and make a new file at the base of our project. I'm gonna right click on my folder new file, and this is going to be app.jsx. Now, you might be wondering why I have this capitalized. Well, you'll see in a bit, uh, it's sort of standard to have your React components capitalized, and naming your files after the React components is also a practice you'll see quite frequently. So we have app capitalized.jsx. Now, JSX is the language that React uses to be able to use XML inside of JavaScript. So let's go ahead and now that we have an app.jsx, the first thing we need to do, it's something you've never been able to do in Meteor before, we can say import react from and then in string, lowercase, react. So this is now going to bring in react from the package react. Because of that, we now have access to this react variable. And you may be wondering, well, in the older versions of Meteor, if we were to use a wrapper package, it would just sort of know React existed. Well, this is actually how things are done more commonly in sort of the real JavaScript world where we're importing packages. So this is less like Meteor and more like everything else, and it should make your Meteor sites feel a little bit more, more standardized. But most importantly, this is so that your file knows what it needs and it doesn't actually just assume it needs everything. So by importing React, this now knows it needs React. And if we don't import React, your file is not going to assume that it needs it. So now we want to go ahead and create our first component by saying class app. Now app is the name of our component and it's going to extends react, sorry, that needs to be capitalized, dot component. Now component also needs to be capitalized. 
and we can have brackets here. Now, if you know anything about React, you could say, hey, we don't need this part if we add something up here. Don't worry about that yet. I'm gonna show it in another video. I don't wanna sort of overload these concepts. So let's go ahead and now, what every single React component needs is a render function, which is going to be what's actually output by that component. So we can say render, and then the parentheses, and then curly brackets. Inside of here, we can return, and then parentheses. Now we need to return something, otherwise we get all the code that we were to put in our render function just wouldn't get output. So we need return and we need this render function. Now inside of here, let's actually have an h1 hello world. Now if writing HTML or XML inside of your JavaScript feels weird, don't worry. It's gonna feel a lot more normal once you get used to it and you're gonna actually really end up liking it. I was definitely one of those people who initially saw the syntax and was like, oh, I don't know about that. And then soon uh, was a convert actually after I actually started using it. So we now have hello world inside of our return. Now one thing you'll need to keep in mind is that the return statement, the code that's directly inside of here, always needs to have a wrapper element. For instance, we couldn't have this. This would give us an error. But what we could have is if we were to wrap this in a div, like so, this is just fine. So that's one thing to consider when returning your code if you don't wanna see any errors. Uh, this works just fine right now as is because the H1 is serving as the wrapper. Now the reason for that has to do with how this is converted to actual JavaScript, the details I'm not gonna go into in this video. Okay, so we now have our very first component, app. And if we were to head to our page, at this point, if you don't know anything about React, you might expect this to show up somehow. But obviously, we're not telling our application to use this component. All we're saying is that this component exists. So now, at the bottom of this code, we're going to have an if, and then we're going to use meteor.isClient. Now, if you aren't familiar with Meteor, Meteor is client is going to make sure that this code runs server side. Now code in files like this in your root directory can run server or client side. So it's important that you use this is client for this next bit of code. And in future videos, we're going to show you a way around using if is client. So now we're going to have brackets. And inside of here, we're going to say meteor dot startup startup is all lowercase and then we're going to have a function and brackets now what this is going to do is run this code on startup and we can say react dot render this is going to render something now we have this new app component that we just made and you can use your app component by saying app like an html element also at this point, keep in mind that this is have a forward slash to close this element. Every component that you use in JSX, including image tags, needs this closing forward slash or else it's going to complain. Okay, so now we can have a comma and this is where we're gonna be passing it in, what element we want this to render into on our actual page. Now to actually make that happen, let's come to index.html and add an ID on the body and we can say render, uh, not Okay, render target. And so render target is where we're going to be inserting this code. So inside of here, we wanna do a standard JavaScript get element by. So we can say document dot get element by ID. And we're passing in simply just render target. So we're grabbing the render target and we're rendering our app component inside of that. Our application then looks at the app component, heads to the render function and renders this hello world. So when I save this, by the time we tab back to our browser, as you can see, hello world. And that's part of the beauty of Meteor. Whenever you save the auto uh, refresh, the pushing of new code into your browser so we don't have to always hit refresh all the time. Now you'll notice we're getting two errors. I would not worry about these errors. It's saying react dot, 
It's saying react.render is deprecated and to use react dom render. Okay, I did this because I didn't want to have to bring in react dom itself for this example. And after we bring in routing, this render issue is gonna go away entirely. In addition, it says, uh, warning render, rendering components directly into document.body is discouraged. Yes, okay. Again, this error is also going to go away once we start routing. So you can completely ignore these two warnings. As long as you see hello world up here, you're in good shape. If not, React is really super good about giving errors that make sense. Now, most of the time that's the case. Sometimes you'll get an error that confuses you, but usually if you follow the error, you will find your answer. So make sure you have console open to track those errors. Cool, so we now have our very first component and we're all ready to start actually getting started using Meteor and React. In the next video, we're going to be adding Flow Router and we're gonna get some routing going using a new package called React Mounter instead of React Flow Router layouts or whatever exists currently. So keep watching, in the next video we're gonna be dropping in some routing and we're gonna create a new page layout. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you want to get these videos early before they're released on YouTube, head to store.leveluptutorials.com and either purchase a series for download with code examples or sign up to be a Level Up Pro and have instant access to streaming right now. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.